isn't this cool? Hey, you're still with us today here at Chip Chase TV, and that is fantastic. Hello, JB. Hi, John. We have been creating a custom ice chest for our 57-foot Monterey. Now what I want to do is I want to teach you how to make a fairing compound on your own so that when everything's said and done, when everything's painted, you could never tell that we did any type of work to the cabinet. And that leads us to our next guest, who we have the honor of having back on the program is my very good friend, J.B. Curl. And J.B. owns Maz Epoxy. Hello, my friend. Hello, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. You know, we recently had you on the program, and we were putting some trim tabs on our 20-foot Bertram Moppy project boat. And we were using your thinner type of resin. Mm -hmm. We're going to use something a little different today because what I want to do is I need to make some type of a fairing compound that won't slide off of our area where we're working. Okay, it's on a vertical surface. So what do we use? Well, today, John, we're going to use the flag resin that we make. It's a heavier bodied resin, but we're going to use it with the same hardeners that we used before. It's still a two to one ratio. The reason we're going to use this is because it's got a little more body to it, so when we add the fillers to it, it won't sag on the surface. It'll hang on the surface for us. Let's talk about fillers because a lot of people might not know what is all available. What's this first filler right here, JB? Well, the first filler we're looking at here, John, is called um, chopped glass. It's actually fiberglass that's milled down to about 3 16 of an inch and it gets used for structural applications. It'll sand like concrete, so we don't want to use it for this application. Okay, now the next one, this is actually wood flour. Yep. And I've used this before. I've used this on our wooden Adirondack guide boat, mm -hmm. okay, when we were building that. And you just mix this up with the resin. And this, this is very good for like a, for like a joint. Yeah, exactly. Gluing, uh, gluing up wood, cold molding applications. It's inexpensive, it's not toxic. Um, and it's easy to work with. But I'm going to be painting this cabinet. Right. Plastic little microsphere. Um, and we're going to mix that with another filler to create the fairing compound that we're going to use. Okay, micro balloons are very easy to sand because these, these round spheres are actually hollow. And man, the sandpaper will cut right through it. Yep. Okay. Yep. But, but why do we want to mix this colloidal silica in? with the micro balloons and boy look at how powdery this stuff yeah, is. Yeah, you don't want to breathe much of this stuff. It'll float around in the wind. So you want to be careful how you handle well, I'm it. I'm going to cover it Colloidal back over. silica is almost like a, an exploded glass particulate and we're going to use that with the phenolic micro balloons because it helps to smooth the surface out and butter the surface out. So we have a lot of pinholes and we don't have to do a lot of extra sanding. Okay, see we, we want to paint the part so we don't want pock marks or any little pinholes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why you want to mix the colloidal silica, which is commonly referred to as Cabasil. It is. That's a trade name from Cabot Industries. Okay. Let's mix up one cup of resin. How much of the micro balloons do we add to it? Well, I would add, I'd start with two cups of the phenolic micro balloons, and then I'd add a cup of the colloidal silica to it. I'd mix that up, see what my consistency looked like, and if it was too runny, I'd add a little more um, phenolic micro balloons. And if it was a little too thick, I'd just add a little more resin to it. What type of thickness are we going for here? Are we going for like a peanut butter? Are we going for like a mayonnaise? Well, in this instance, you've got, a, you've got vertical doors on the boat. So we want something that's going to be like a pudding mayonnaise type consistency. It'll be nice and smooth surface and it'll hang for us. Okay. Now, a lot of these materials are very powdery. And I want to give you a little trick here when you're mixing them up with your resin. What I have is an ordinary mixing cup with a lid and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor knife, check this out, and I'm just going to cut into the top. I'm going to make an X right into the top. This way after I get all of my materials in there, I cover it over and here's an ordinary mixing paddle. We can put it right down through that top and mix it without everything flying out into the air. Now, once we do have our mixture thoroughly kind of all mashed together, mm -hmm. we're going to go over to the boat, we're going to use an applicator like this one right here, and we're going to smooth it over all of those areas that we've been working on. Once it sets up, it's going to take about 8 hours and 75 degrees. Once it sets up, we can sand it, we can prime it, we can paint it, and it is going to look like we have never been there before. It's going to be very, very cool. JB, thank you so much for thank all the you. information.